survival TV could kill you. There's a lot of things to watch, but there's also some things that are well worth ignoring or at least watching them very carefully with some heavy filters on when you look at them. You know, life for most of Americans, is in, in my life, my lifestyle, it's just wonderful. You know, you turn on the tap and you've got the water and you flip the switch and the lights come on, we have the pantries are stocked, we can go to the store, uh, things get hot when you turn the dial and you can put things in the oven and the microwave and you dump the scraps down the disposal, dishwasher cleans everything, life in this country is great and it is, it's wonderful. I hope and pray it never changes uh, because I do enjoy that. But will it always be like this? And some people think, well, of course it will. Well, can you be sure? Just how sure are you that it will be? In terms of getting instruction, that's one of the things that we do here. But there's lots of books uh, and there's other webcasts and audios and cl live classes you can go to. And there's a lot of things that you can watch. Uh, that are available on TV, but it's the classes, videos, books, and the broadcast things or the cable things, lots and lots of information, and that's where I, I try to watch and see as many things I possibly can and learn, but I've also learned you have to be careful of your sources because, well, consider that it is only information, and in many cases it's somebody's opinion or in some cases it's somebody's agenda about what they want to teach you. So we have to ask, what's the truth really? That's the thing that you need to do. And one of the other things, when you're listening to someone that's doing a presentation, you're watching a, a documentary, um, a news program or anything, and there's what is the motive behind that program, behind that presentation? Very often it's a purely a commercial uh, motive that somebody has something to sell you, and that's not necessarily bad because you do need to buy things. Uh, sometimes it, there's political agendas, all kinds of things. So ask that question. What's the motive? What's the agenda here? Now, I have a listing of the things we're going to be going through. And I'll tell you now, and at the end of this program, if you'd like this, if you'll send an email to me, I will send it to you. And you can send that email to info at safeharboralliance.com. And in the near future, we'll have it posted on the website where people can download. That's one of the things we'll be able to do with the, the new programming. We'll have things available for people to download there. But in the meantime, request the Survival TV list, and we'll be glad to email it to us. Give us a few days because we need to pick up those emails and then get it sent out to you. Small crew trying to cover a lot. Well, what I'm going to do is, as we go through this, I'm going to give you my ratings on things. Now this is my opinion, but I'll explain to you why. They're listed alphabetically within each of these four groups, but it's things that I've watched and I have a plus A rating, things that I've watched and they have a plus rating, things I've watched and have a negative rating, and things I've not watched but hope to as I can, and I haven't been able to necessarily rate them, but I have hope for them. So we're going to start out with things I've watched and have a plus a rating and again these things are listed alphabetically within these sections and so don't necessarily take that uh, it's in the order that I give them to you that's the a plus 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 number one and this is when many of these things you're going to have to get on a DVD now this was broadcast oh it's been 15 years ago if I remember right uh, PBS uh, put these on it was a series there were four or five uh, in the series it was called the Colonial House. And what it is, it was uh, taking people from our modern society and putting them back in a situation like in the late 1400s, 1500s, 1600s, back in that level of technology and have them, well, live there as a little colony with that technology of the time. Now, I would hope in some of our adventure, adventures we may have ahead that we won't have something as that severe that would put us back to that level of technology because that's hard. But let me tell you why this is such an important thing to watch. Uh, because you're looking at both the human dynamics, you're looking at the work level, you're looking at the kinds of things they had to do, and it was tough. One of the things that's interesting in this and some of the others, you had young people, the teenagers that are there, these are families. And they're working all the time. In fact, they're asking questions sometimes. Do we have to work all day long? And the answer is, yeah, if you want to eat, you want to survive, you do. 
These people were there for a few months to uh, see if they could survive. They were also working with the governance of the time, the, the political system of it, you know, and there were some there were some unhappy people there, particularly when you take a look at people in our our society in this country where we have so many freedoms and opportunities you don't have to worry about anything and all of a sudden you've got this governor there that's running the show and it's very much like you know the boss and the company and it's like I'm home leave me alone but it didn't work out that way so it, it was fascinating to watch the human interaction the emotions as well as some of the technical difficulties these people had how much work they had to do I highly recommend that you you can watch these things online, you can rent them, Netflix and things like that. It's worth owning so that you can go through it several times. This was a series that was on PBS. It is an excellent one. One of the others that's on, and this has been running as of late, is Dual Survival. We have uh, two individuals that are a part of that, that are the hosts on it and that's why it's called dual and you have one individual uh, Cody London who's kind of a very primitive minimalist survival guy and he goes around very often barefoot or just in uh, wool socks in the winter and things like that you know guys a little tougher than me and I'm not sure that's the smartest way to do it but he can get away with it most of the time although I've watched a few bloody foot tracks uh, footprints occasionally in the snow and on rocks and so it's like yeah that's why I wear shoes but and then you have the other guy who's more of the uh, the military um, trained uh, special forces guy and these two guys are thrown into a situation on on islands in desert in the Montana winter and places like this and they're trying to work it out and they have some disagreements about the best thing to do they get along fairly well and they defer to each other from time to time and you watch things that work and don't work uh, and it's a very useful uh, program I found it to be quite uh, quite authentic in its presentation don't always agree with things it's not the way I would do it but they do things quite well you can learn from that dual survival is worth watching it's not a uh, terribly phony program as some of them are another one that was a PBS series that was on a number of years back was called the frontier house now this is back in like the 1880s and it's the technology of the 1880s which is significantly advanced over the colonial period this is, if I have to go back a ways, I, I don't want to go all the way to the colonial times, and it's more like this, and this is more likely where we would be because we have so many tools and things around us. But it's the same premise of taking these uh, four families, I believe, and plunking them down in, the, uh, in a wilderness setting, the log cabins, the handwork, growing your own food, killing your own animals, doing those kinds of things, and making provisions, getting ready, for the winter they came along and then they looked at them and scored them to say okay if you now had to go through the winter you're gonna live or you're gonna die it was also interesting because you know they're supposed to stay there and not sneak off and cheat and there was one of the families they just couldn't stay away from some of the the modern things and they uh, snuck off to some other households now they're being followed by camera you know that's going on and they're allowed a certain level of freedom but they they go over to a house and they're doing some bartering and begging and things like that. The other thing they're doing is they're keeping a video diary at various times during the day where they go talk to a video camera and express what they're feeling and listening to some of the, the teenage girls and boys about this. I mean, it, it was tough. And, with the, and this is why it's so important because they were only there for like three months or so and it was going to come to an end. They, they knew that they didn't have to, you know, live through the winter and take care of themselves, you know, take care of ourselves or don't and you're in trouble. If you were thrown into a situation where it's a keeper, in other words, there isn't any out, how would it be? That's why these are very valuable because they're quite realistic. These are not, you know, they're not staged in that you know, take it again, let's try it again, you did that wrong. These people are making all kinds of mistakes. They're learning from them. Everybody volunteered for this in this in the colonial house, and I can tell you that every one of them had you know I had no clue it was going to be that tough. Well, we don't have any clue about how tough things could be. And I'm not a gloom and doom guy. I'm just a realist because there are situations you get thrown into, and it's rough. And as I said, we're going to be talking about wildfires here, and there's some 30 plus families just up the road from me, 15 miles that didn't expect that their houses would be burned up and in some cases they had very little time to evacuate 
it was grab what you could to get out of there and some of them are not coming back to their homes. But they had no idea that it would really, really happen. And so now they have to deal with that. And that's the way life is sometimes. It has these surprises. Frontier House, you should watch this. In fact, you should own it. Watch it a number of times. Share it with your family and other people out there. It is excellent to learn from. And uh, I think you'll both enjoy it. You'll be surprised by it. Another series that ran for only one season, disappointingly, because they actually did quite a good job, was called Surviving Disasters. Now, again, you can find these things in YouTube, and you can find some things at Netflix, and you can find many of them online. Uh, this one was actually quite good. Uh, it was They did a lot of heavy advertising in it, so this one-hour program, I think I timed it, and they had like uh, 35 minutes of actual programming because they were really plugging the advertisers into it. But the presentation was really good. I wish it had been a two-hour program with a little less uh, advertising because this instructor was uh, doing an excellent job of showing scenarios and walking you through. I highly recommend that you find this one and watch it uh, because I found it to be both very authentic and good instruction. It was just too short of a presentation time to get all the information in. That was my only complaint. He needed more time to really instruct. But it's well worth watching, Surviving Disaster. Survivor Man's another one that ran for a long time with Les Shroud. And of the outdoor survival one, this one I liked uh, very much, uh, along with Dual Survival, which hasn't run as long. Uh, Les Shroud did a good job. Now, you know, you see a few times where he has to get rescued. But he's doing it solo, and I have tremendous respect for this guy. He's doing his own camera work. He's being dropped off in a location, and he has a place he has to go through, through the wilderness, and it's summer, winter, spring, fall, jungle, all kinds of situations. And he's he's not an absolute expert in everything. He gets he consults with people. He's instructed in some things. He goes out and does it. And in a lot of cases, this is on-the-job training, and it's interesting to watch him. I watch him from my standpoint, make some mistakes. I also watch him do things that's like, man, I never thought of that, or I wouldn't have known to do that. So it was very good to watch. Now, he went to some places you and I would probably know. You know, he's in the Australian outback. Most of us won't go there. You know, in Africa and a few places like that. So there were some things that did not apply to, I'll say, nearly all of us. But the psychological part of it, the isolation part of it, and the skill part of it was useful even when he's in Africa or some strange place. Highly recommend that you watch that. Uh, you know, it's, it was an interesting series, and he gets himself into trouble every now and then. He always had a, a radio, and he's being monitored at a distance. Uh, and they do set things up because there are certain things that are dropped off for him to have that he's going to discover. But it would be things like you might find if you're out there. Uh, so the premise, I thought, was quite good. And it is worth watching. These are the, the ones I've shown you have this, this plus A rating. I believe that, for my opinion, those would be the most valuable ones to have. We'll next go to the others that I have watched, and they have a plus rating. They're still very good, um, maybe not as highly rated as the other from my perspective, but uh, absolutely worth watching also. Now, some of these are not directly related to uh, just outdoor survival and emergencies and things, although many of them are. On the Weather Channel, there's another of, a number of things that run there. One of them is uh, Cantori Stories, Jim Cantori. He's a meteorologist, and this is one of his programs that he hosts where they're showing all kinds of weather things and events that occur. In some cases, he's kind of uh, being filmed while he's in them, or he's telling the story afterwards. And to watch these natural disasters that have to do with all kinds of things with weather and other kinds of natural things, you will learn some things from it. You'll see things that say, wow, boy, I, 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 and, and this is what I've done as I've watched them. It's like I didn't really know that. I have never been through a hurricane. I've never been through a tsunami. I've never been through uh, a massive storm surge. I've been in some minor flooding. I was in one tornado in a tent. That was an experience. Uh, put me in the hospital for a day and a half, but uh, uh, at a uh, scout camp. Uh, and I've been through quite a number of other things. I've been in heat waves. I've been in extreme cold and like that. But some of these major disasters, 
uh, I have never been in, but I've learned from watching and learn some things that, uh, like if you're on the beach and there's been an earthquake and the water's now receding and the bay is drying up, don't stand and watch in curiosity. Run for high ground now because that means that the tsunami is on the way. And I didn't know that. And so from some of these programs are worth watching because you may find yourself on the coast someplace or on an island where this could in fact occur. Uh, full force nature is another one of these things. A, a lot of tornadoes and hurricanes and floods and weather events like that and, and winter storms and ice storms, uh, but it is, uh, it's worth watching and you see people that find themselves in uh, tough situations. You see people who don't, you know, survive or, you know, they talk about the ones that didn't make it, the trouble they went through. So it is another one uh, that has been on several of the different channels. The Weather Channel is where it's run quite a number of times. And some of these are in, I'll say, in reruns, and some of them they're making new ones as well as they're showing the old ones. Another one that's quite useful is a series that's run in several of the cable uh, networks out there, I Shouldn't Be Alive. And uh, these are people that found themselves in situations where, you know, the, the chances of making it were not the best. And they take you through the analysis of those things. People that are stranded on a deserted desert island off of the uh, coast of Baja, California, and their, their uh, boat has been destroyed, you know, and they're, they're dying there. And if those Mexican fishermen hadn't come along and see them, they would have been found some months or years later as these uh, dried up skeletons on the beach. Uh, people that find themselves uh, trapped uh, in the mountains, an individual, a leg is pinned, and of course some of us know the story of a few people, that have, one individual in uh, Utah that had his hand pinned and he had to amputate his hand to rescue himself. And some of these that are shown, uh, they're not all in wilderness settings, many of them are in uh, uh, a few of them have been in house uh, settings, or I should say city, uh, city settings and rural settings, as well as remote areas. Worth watching and analyzing, because what we really want to learn to do is to avoid problems. Don't find yourself in them. It could happen tomorrow is a scenario of taking a look at what would happen if you had one of these massive tornadoes or hurricanes hit. In most cases, it's a metropolitan area. You know, it's the recreation of the San Francisco earthquake. Uh, nowadays with the current population or it's a uh, an F5, uh, monster F5 tornado that tears through Dallas or you have an F, uh, excuse me, a category four hurricane that slams directly into Manhattan and things like that and they just go through what it would be like. Uh, so for people particularly that live in uh, some of these metropolitan areas, I think they also did one that was the uh, New Madrid uh, earthquake in St. Louis and, and those things. So it's worth watching uh, to give you an idea of maybe where you want to live or not live or how you might prepare yourself. Junkyard Wars almost looks like it doesn't fit, but I learned from that. Now this is a British program and the, the premise is that they're going to put two teams in these junkyard in the junkyard and you know it's all the stuff you can scrounge up. And they have a challenge for them. Well it's it's set up in the sense that if they, they want you to build a flying machine they've got to have the right kinds of variety of things that you might be able to use to do that or build a vehicle or things. But it, I find it interesting because if we find ourselves having to scrounge things and build things, here's some ideas and so it has been interesting to watch how some of these people solve problems and how some of them fail. And while I'm watching I'm going like, yeah, well I wouldn't do it that way or like, man, that's clever. I would have never thought about that. And of course they have the tools and some of the materials there, but you can learn from it. Man Tracker is an interesting reality sort of game show where you have the Man Tracker, this uh, tracker expert on horseback that's going to track down a team of two that's uh, dropped off at a point given a mile or two lead on them and then it's to run to the, the, stop, the finish line which is going to take them overnight to get out of there and he catches them, if I remember right through statistics, he catches up with them about 60% of the time. Now why would you watch that? You might find yourself in a situation where you're having to escape from somebody. You might not be somebody that's hunting you, but it might in fact be, you know, weather or floods or different things like this. It may in fact be, uh, you know, anarchy that's going on and you've got to get out of there. So watching this, I find it, fair, I find it fairly intense because it's a game of not getting caught 
it's fairly realistic, so it could well be worth watching. Here's another one that's actually quite excellent much of the time. Now, a lot of the things don't apply. You know, it's the menthos and the, and the Coke, uh, you know, kind of things. Okay, whatever. But they have done some extremely valuable uh, verifying of what would be myths or legends and also busting some of them. They've done things on hypothermia. And they've done them on dehydration. They've done them on, you know, an automobile that plunges into a river and, uh, you know, it's submerged in water and escaping. And so some of the programs they've done apply directly to things that you may find yourself involved in and how would you survive it. And what's the truth really about the things we hear about how to, you know, get out of a car that's submerged uh, and they do things different ways. And so it is, some of the programs are very useful. Some of them are curiosities, but some of them are very, very useful to watch. One of the things I would like to do is actually get the library of these and then go through them and here's the ones that absolutely apply you need to know here's the ones that are curiosities and and don't have any meaning you know uh, blowing up toilets and some of those things not sure that uh, applies a lot although they have had you know are you safe in a bathtub and things like that well it depends if it's a cast iron or a plastic one depending on what's going on so worth watching those as you can out of the wild, and they've actually done three of these. There was the first one was the Alaska experiment where you had a group of people, uh, like a half a dozen that were dropped off, given a map, and they had waypoints they had to go to, and there's cabins and places, and they're traveling cross country. Now, they're not without supplies and things, but they have limited things, and they've got to get out of there. And it's rough terrain, and it's hard going. Each one of them also has their button they can push that says, you know, get me out of here. I, I can't do this anymore. And so you watch some of the physical, mental, emotional stress they're going through, and you learn from that, uh, as well as the human dynamics of somebody that's trying to lead and somebody that doesn't want to follow and vice versa. These are all things that we could face within our family and or in some of these emergency situations that would be worth watching and learning from. Uh, Storm Stories is another one of them, kind of like Cantori Stories where you go through all kinds of weather situations and uh, watch what people find themselves trapped in and you learn some things you really shouldn't do uh, and you watch some of the mistakes that other people have so you know, I found it to be useful uh, some of it gets to be the same old thing it's the same old things about tornadoes and hurricanes and floods and what have you but after you've watched a number of them you're getting the, some very important gists of things for things that a lot of us are not exposed to, but it might happen someday, so you can learn. Another one of these PBS series, now this one I didn't rate quite as highly, uh, not because it's not good, but it's the 1900 house, and now we have a little more technology coming in, uh, in terms of some electricity and some phones and things like this, but it's the same premise where you take a modern family and you drop them into a household of 1900, and so it is well worth watching and, and considering. And here again, it's some of the emotions that they go through as they're trying to deal with this. You know, you don't have the copious amounts of continuous running hot water, and you taking a shower, you know, in the morning and the evening is not practical to do. Uh, and how you have to to carry wood and coal and these kinds of things. And so it was very, very instructive for the family, and it's very instructive for us. So again, highly recommend it. The colony is an interesting one. It's kind of a, a mixed bag. I rated it still as an A plus because uh, it's a it's a one of the early reality shows. You have a group of people that are put into a setting where basically the premise is there's been some kind of a disaster, more than likely something like a pandemic. Most of the population is dead. Here you are. In this case, they're set up like in warehouses. There's a number of things that are there. Limited number of supplies and you're trying to find ways to make some electricity and get some motive power going and uh, safety and you have the human dynamics which is the one that is the most interesting as far as I'm concerned you watch the dynamics of the people that are trying to lead the people that are trying to follow and the people that don't want to lead and or follow and they get into some you know snarly situations the other thing that adds a little more interest to it that's actually somewhat realistic is they now have people that have been hired, they're, they're actors, they're going to come in and they're trying to break in, steal their stuff, they're shooting at them and things like that. These people are having to defend themselves and try and stay out of the way. 
Now they're not firing real bullets, but it uh, puts in a level of intensity to this that could be similar to what you know we could face if we have a societal breakdown, and that's what this one is about. So I would recommend that you do, in fact, watch that, uh, and it's the human dynamics and the emotions again. Another one of them worth seeing, and I had a hard time finding images on some of these that I could snag, so some of them are uh, very low resolution, but there's a program that's been running, Twist of Fate, and this is where somebody's caught in a flash flood or in a wildfire, things like this, and they're in big trouble. And if somebody hadn't come along, that's the twist of fate or something had changed at the last moment, they were probably going to die. So you see how people got themselves into a situation. You see that they waited too long. You know, they were advised to evacuate, and they decided, now nah, we'll ride it out. And now they're on the roof about ready to drown, and they're going like, man, I wish I'd left. And somebody comes along with a jet ski or a boat, you know, that was that was going to go a different direction. I remember one of them, this guy is going to, uh, uh, I think he was leaving his house. He finally decided to bail. He's on a uh, jet ski, and he was going to escape one way, and, but for some reason he went the opposite direction, and he comes upon these people that are in a house. There's fires going on, all kinds of things, and they're in big trouble, and he rescues them drags them out of there, and if he hadn't come along, they probably would not have survived. Weather caught on camera is another one of these weather things that uh, it's, it's useful, and you know, it's not like trying to watch all the weather things that are out there, because some of them, there's some, the same story is used in different ones, but if actually watching them for a little while, you'll catch quite a number of things. Same idea, what to avoid, get an idea of when it's time to bail, uh, how much trouble you can really be in and how deadly these things are. So the weather ones can, in fact, be useful. Now, when weather changed history uh, is one of them that has um, of interest and in where they're looking at how the storm, how the cold, how it caused different things. You know, the, the Challenger shuttle uh, disaster is in there because it was just a little extra cold and a mistake was made. Now, we're not launching uh, space shuttles, but you know, we pay attention, and it's about pushing the limit sometimes. It's like, oh, well, it won't be that bad. Oh, it's not that serious. Oh, uh, you know, we'll probably be able to just ride this out. Well, it could change your history. So here again, weather has played a major role in so many things that have been around us. Now, those are the ones that have the what I call the, the plus rating. They're worth watching. The first ones, the A plus or the plus A, now we go to things I've watched that have varying degrees of negative ratings on them. These are the ones that you have to, I'll say, watch very carefully, or after you've seen a little bit, it's like, oh, don't fall into this one. And there's some of these are really, really bad. The worst one on planet Earth is Survivor. And everything about this program is wrong, and I'm appalled at it. This is, this is bad TV. This is dangerous TV. And what's so scary about it is they're running this, uh, uh, if I remember, I think it actually started in England, and now there's 28 countries that have their own survival where you take these teams of people and they're pitted against each other and they're, they're trying to win and there's a prize and everything. And it's win at all costs. It's, you know, stab somebody in the back. It's uh, uh, do things to make them mad, make them look stupid, make them uh, look foolish, and then you know, your little group, your little clique, you gang up on them and you vote them off the island and those kinds of things. It is absolutely the opposite of what you want to be doing. Now, there's people that are going to behave like that. But what scares me is we have major TV programs around the world and there are, I, I forget what the numbers are, but there's like 28 million people or more than that that are following this thing weekly. That is scary because of what they're being taught, how to think when things get bad lie, cheat, steal, uh, kill if you have to, whatever you have to do to win, to survive, this is absolutely wrong. This is a program about teaching how to um, create anarchy. And it's absolutely horrific. And the, in it, what's the motive of this program? Uh, sponsorships, make money. That's the motive of the program at the most benign level, and it may have some more uh, shall we say, evil things behind it, but this is truly bad TV. Now, you can learn some things from it. I do watch what some of these people do, and some of it's clever, but I can't stand the program. For me, 
it's not there's no redeeming grace to it I've watched a little bit of it and I just don't want to go there emotionally psychologically spiritually avoid that one at all costs and anybody that is I'll say in your family or in your group of friends that you're thinking when things get tough this is going to be my community if they're following this vote them out now you don't want them because they're being trained in things that are absolutely wrong that's how seriously bad this program is. So that is my biggest quadruple negative rating uh, that you can have out there and if you're curious watch a little bit and see if I'm not right about that because it's awful. Another one that is uh, has been playing that I really really object to is this one that's called Doomsday Bunkers and it's it's an infomercial. It's a one-hour infomercial for these people that build these bunkers and they just literally say if you don't have one of these bunkers when it gets bad you're gonna die and that is baloney now in some cases you may really have to have something to this level that is a buried bunker in the ground with the with the hidden door and all those kinds of things but some of the things they plug into these things is just scary bad and the price tag on them is awful you know it's four hundred and fifty thousand dollars and that's before the guy moves his stuff in that's just the shelters and with all of the flat screen TVs and all these wonderful things to maintain their lifestyle, not that that's bad, but they give the impression is if you can't spend that amount of money, you're toast. That's not true. In fact, some of these people will, will not make it because they're going to think, I've got all taken care of, the rest of the world is going to die, and I'm going to hide down in here, and some of them are going to find out they can't do it. Others are, they're going to have everything going really well down there. Then when they use up all their provisions and they come out, they're not going to be able to handle the world out there. Whatever it is, it's an infomercial, and there's some interesting things to learn from it. Just recognize it for what it is. I get ideas from it, and it's kind of like, gee, I didn't think about that. That's pretty clever. They do some other things in there that are really scary bad. I remember this one where, um, you know, oh, and by the way, the other thing that you see him pack into this thing is, I mean, uh, the National Guard should have so many uh, rounds of ammunition and rifles and different things. I mean, some of these guys have literally uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars in munitions. And not that that's bad. I'm not against that. In fact, I'd like to have them too. But it's uh, the premise, particularly when people are trying to learn about these things and you see this, you go like, huh, why even start? I don't have that amount of money. Uh, and I don't have that many, you know, guns, so I'm not going to make it. So people give up. It's it's teaching the wrong thing. But I remember this one that I was watching, that they were making some booby traps going into the entrance way there. And this, I was, my chin was in my lap, going, "You have got to be kidding me." They had two booby traps. One of them was you could push a button on the wall, and they had this spiked panel, this steel panel that had all these spikes on it that when you came down to the door and if they didn't like you, you push this thing and you know it impaled you at the door. It's like, that's wrong uh, kind of a thing. And you know, it's like, okay, you're there one day and somebody knocks on the door and you lean up against the door frame up there, you push the button. It happened to be your wife coming in. I mean, you set uh, something very dangerous at the entryway like that. It's really clever and everybody's proud about it. And I'm going like, you guys are idiots. In that same one, the thing they had, it had a handrail going into it that was this uh, pipe. And if you looked at it closely, it had some little holes in it. What it was, it was a, it was a blowtorch in there. It was a flamethrower that uh, had propane. And so in their entryway, if there's somebody you looked for the people you didn't like in there, you know, you, you opened up the propane and sparked it, you know, and you torched this guy in the entryway. And I just, I was not impressed with this concept and what they're trying to teach. So. Doomsday Bunkers is on my list of, yeah, you can learn some things. You can't learn anything from Survivor. You can learn some things from here, but, but watch it, not with a grain of salt. Take it with a shovel of salt and watch, understand what it is. It's an infomercial and, and learn what you can from anyway. Enough on that. Another one that actually I was invited to participate in this, and once I learned what their premise was, it was like, mm, I just won't answer your emails and phone calls anymore. I'd even sent in some video and things like that and once I figured out what they're doing uh, was not impressed this quote on the front kind of tells it all while all of y'all in New York are eating ramen noodles around here we're going to be eating ribeye steak and t-bones you know nanner 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 we're doing great you're suffering aren't we smart you're idiots um, and 
again, the premise on the show is wrong, and what it's to me, what it's doing is if somebody's trying to learn about, you know, becoming prepared and provident living, you watch this show, this thing will mess you up. For one thing is here again, you see people are spending monstrous amounts of money. Now, if you have the money, spend it. I would like to have some more, and I would spend it in these things too. But it sends the message that you can only do this if you can afford bunkers and retreats and things like that. And also the attitude of the people very often is, now some of them were pretty good. Some of the folks there were fairly humble about it, but they were trying to goad these people into this attitude like this quote right here. The other thing that's wrong about it is you take like these people right here, they're probably, it's kind of like, okay, what's the one thing you're preparing for? Chemical warfare or uh, biological warfare or nuclear or this or that. And they were allowed, they showed it like this is the only thing you're preparing for, and that's not correct. Yes, if you're preparing for chemical warfare and all the fallout from that, you're actually doing a lot of other things too. But they force these people into a box, and they give it in a way that to me is, gives a very negative impression of this. And if somebody is just trying to learn about these things, watches this program or Doomsday Bunker, you, they'll bail before they get started rather than being instructive. So again, I'm pretty offended about the thing and glad I'm not on it. Uh, Man versus Wild is another one of these things that is just so horrifically negative. Now there are some things to learn from this program. And Bear Grylls is extraordinarily skilled. He's a uh, British Special Forces guy, strong, uh, highly capable, all kinds of skills and things like this. And they build the thing as though, you know, learn what to do if you're caught in the world, we'll teach you, and in the wild, we'll teach you how to save your life. No, this guy's going to teach you how to die the first day. He does things that are so horrifically wrong that it's scary. In fact, right on this, uh, this jacket here, you see one of them. See in that circle right there? I watched one of these programs. He's climbing a waterfall. Okay, he wants to get up this thing, and it's steep, and so he climbs this waterfall without safety protection, which is stupid. If you, you don't climb a waterfall anyway. There's going to be another way. And his premise always is, well, I'm going to have to walk five miles to go around it, so I'll take the shortcut. And I go, well, you don't take shortcuts when you're lost alone out there. Shortcuts kill you. He does it again and again. You know, you slip and fall on that waterfall out there, bust an ankle, you're by yourself, you know, you're dead. Now, in his case, very strong, very skilled, very capable, very practiced. But he's teaching this to, you know, people that are like, oh, that's what you do. You're in the wilderness playing around, you know, then you go out there and you die. I watch him climb trees all the time. You don't climb trees. He's in the, the jungle, you know, and the canopy's 120 feet up there, and he can't see where he's going. So he says, I've got to look around and see where I'm going. So he climbs this tree, again, without protection. He's 100 and some feet up in the air. You don't do that. Uh, another one that was one of them, there's a couple of them, just stupid stuff. He comes to this kind of this, this cliff, and again, it's one of the, I'm going to have to walk a long ways around, but rather than do that, there's a big pine tree that's grown right close to it. It's an Inglewood spruce that's grown up there, and they're big and tall and fairly open, and it's like, I can jump into that tree and then shinny down it, and I have to do that. So he jumps into the tree. I, I kind of detected he beat himself up a little bit in there, and he darn near killed himself in that one, and then he come down. You don't do that kind of a thing. He has a camera crew that's watching him. He gets hurt. They just radio for the helicopter. They come, you know, helicopter him out of there, put the season on hold for a few months while his leg mends, and he picks it back up again like nothing happened. If that was you out there on your own, you're dead. And then there was the one, I catch him every now and then, where he's been rescued, but they don't tell you he's been rescued. It was in the Colorado Rockies. It may have been the same one where he jumped into the tree. I'm not sure. Um, but what he does is he comes to this river. It's like March, it's spring or April, and it's you know it's flood season, it's runoff season, cold, cold water to start with. He wants to get to the other side of this river, and it's you know I don't know it's 100 feet wide, 150 feet wide, and it's running you know four or five, six feet deep across most of it. But he wants to get across, but he also wants to go downstream. And he says, look at this river, it's flowing at you know 15, 16 miles an hour, and I can only walk at five or whatever it is, and I can go downstream and cover a lot of territory, so let me show you how you make a personal flotation device. He's found a plastic bag and some uh, a, a little kind of a day pack, and there's some Ziploc bags and some other stuff that he 
puts in there to give a flotation thing that he's going to hang on to and he gets into the river. It's cold water. It's hypothermia city, folks. He's in there and then he's floating down. Of course, the camera crew is behind him in a raft, you know, filming him go through some little rapids and what have you. I watch him go over this rapid and he disappears. I mean, he goes underneath there. And the other thing that's going on, this flotation device he's made, it's leaking, you know, and he's sinking lower and lower in the water and he's flowing through these rapids and this cold water. So he goes over this rapid and he disappears and after a couple of seconds of filming they cut away and the next thing you see he's crawling up on the bank you know talking about how he's floated downstream and all he's all proud of himself but here's the way it was when he went into that rapid he's hanging on to this backpack full of uh, plastic bags that he's blown up and when he crawls up on the uh, the, the beach uh, actually they showed him back into the water and he swims over to the side and then he crawls up on the, the sand in there but when he crawls up on there, he has a flotation device, a PFD, personal flotation device, one of these thin ones that's under his shirt. He didn't have one under his shirt before. The camera crew said, you know, they, I think he darn near drowned. <laughs> they, they had to fish him out of the water, probably coughing and sputtering. And they said, you're not going back in the water without this. So he took his shirt off, put it on, and then he floats downstream. And it was obvious to me that, uh, you know, he had to be rescued. If that had been you in that river, you're dead. Bear Grylls will teach you how to die. He's very skilled. He has safety crews with him. He can get away with that. You cannot. So I do not respect the man like I respect um, uh, Les Shroud and what he does. He does things that are much more authentic, and he's not teaching you stupid things that will get you in trouble. Okay. Let's go to the things I have not watched, but I have some hope for, or I've seen just a little bit of them, or in one case it was a long, long time ago, and I don't remember that much about it for sure, so I would consider watching this. One of them is, I didn't watch this a lot, it's Jericho, as a series that was on the premises, there's been uh, several, it's like 13 cities in the U.S. have been nuked, it was our own government that did that, there's all this conspiracy going on, and you have these different cities and Jericho around and they're kind of fighting with each other and trying to survive in these things. It, it's kind of like the survival thing, the, the, the survivor. It's not as bad as that and so it would be okay to watch but again it's one that's not real high on my list. There's a whole bunch of things that are much more important than this but if you have time it might be worth watching. This is one I never watched, worst case scenario, because it was hosted by Bear Grylls. Well, I repent of that because maybe he does take you through some scenarios and maybe he does teach well, I don't know. But I refuse to watch it because of what I saw him do in Man vs. Wild. I figure, oh man, it's going to be as bad as that. I caught a little part of a segment and it seemed to be okay. It might be worth watching, but I still, I, I protest against Bear Grylls because of the things he did in Man vs. Wild. He's a show-off artist. The guy is, it's like, gee whiz, mom, look what I can do, see no hands, and I can get away with this, nanner, nanner. You know, you do what he does, you're going to end up getting yourself hurt. Another one that has high ratings on it, I've only not watched it because I don't get this channel. It's on the Outdoor Channel, uh, The Best Defense Survival. And I've read some ratings by other people. It sounds like it might be good. These two guys that host it and go through it, it could be a good program. I just don't know. I haven't watched it. Uh, so I don't rate it negatively. I wrote, rate it as I don't know, but I have hope for it because of the things I've heard. Man, Woman, Wild didn't run very long. I watched uh, parts of two episodes. My time sometimes is very limited, and when they were running, I couldn't catch them. Uh, the man, this is a man and wife. The man, he's a, a Navy spe uh, SEALs or Special Forces, highly trained survival guy, tough guy. Uh, you know, eats raw snakes and uh, bite off chicken heads if he has to, whatever it is, and wade through swamps up to his eyeballs. He's okay with those things, pulling leeches off his body. The lady is his wife who has been stay at home. You go play your, you know, survival games out there, and they put on this program where he's going to take his wife. And it was kind of interesting, the little bits that I watched, because she was having a hard time with some of this stuff. He's like, come on, honey, we're okay. And she's going like, huh, I want a shower in my hairdresser in a few of them. So, but again, it's some of the things we may face and some of the things we put up with. And so I, I thought what I saw was pretty good, but I haven't watched it enough to truly rate the program. Uh, Ray Mears' World of Survival is rated quite highly. This was a British 
explorer and survival expert, and what I've read about it sounds very well. I've never seen it play here, and I have not uh, got the DVDs on that. But it does seem to be good. It's probably, it's got to be better than Bear Grylls. I think it's probably much more authentic than that and uh, sounded quite good. So I'd recommend that you consider getting that one. And then there's another one, Survivors. And this was one that was put on a long time ago. Uh, and there's another one that was British also was um, No Blade of Grass. And that one was even older. And this was a series about what... Uh, um, has happened to people and some of the anarchy and things that they go through. Um, it seems to be maybe worth watching. Some of the other things I've given you are probably better than that. Well, those are the series that I'm aware of, and this list you can get from me if you'll send a message to info at Safe Harbor Alliance and request the Survival TV Could Kill You list. Uh, I'll send those things to you. On the front is uh, one of them that's alphabetical on the back is the one that's grouped the way that I showed it here, and it has my ratings with them. Now, some other things to consider as we go along. Uh, these are uh, some, um, and, and the thing that, well, before we get to that, the thing you must have is options. You need backups. You need to understand how and why things really work, and that's why I would like you to watch some of these programs, some of them in particular, because they're going to give you ideas about, gee, I never thought about that. Boy, that's a problem that had not occurred to me. And the mental, emotional, psychological, and the, the interplay between people is one of them that we're just not highly experienced in doing for most of us. So you watch these things so that you can gain knowledge. And remember I told you in the very beginning, these programs are only information. What I'm giving you his, here is information. It's also an opinion. You need knowledge. The formula of knowledge from um, uh, the the law the law of the law of provident living. Sorry, I lost my words there. Is simply this: knowledge is k equals i times e. Knowledge is information multiplied by experience. It's not knowledge until you do something with it. So you practice now. You play with things now. Somebody gives you an idea, you try it. You break it. It's like that's a lousy piece of equipment. You make mistakes now. So because you can fix things now, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not a keeper. It's, you know, you can go back to the store and say, hey, that was a piece of junk. Let's try your more expensive one. You also need to do things in the dark. You need to learn to do things kind of by braille, by feel. You develop habits and you develop both mental memory but muscle memory about doing things. It's about using your knife. Very shortly there's going to be a, um, one of our feature articles will be on my knife and the things that I do with it and why I do what I do. That will be on the, the, the website here fairly soon. So it's about developing habits and getting experience now so that you have knowledge. All right, and along this line there are some movies that would be worth considering and they're listed alphabetically. And by the way, there's a lot more than this out there, but uh, these are ones that I can talk about right now easily. We'll do a whole thing on movies in the future. After Armageddon was done by the movie uh, by the History Channel uh, about two years ago, two and a half years ago, and I watched it. Now, do not watch this for the technical content. Actually, when I did the library here a while back, I, ta uh, back, I talked more about this. Don't watch it for the technical. You watch it for the emotion. You watch it for some of the decision making. Uh, you watch it for the trouble that these people in were in. That's the reason you watch it. There are some things that are technically very wrong within it. And when we do the review of these things, because I'm going to be doing more and more book reviews and some movie reviews on it, and I'd like to even, because we have a way of broadcasting these things, I can broadcast a video, some captured video, so I can show you a few of the clips in here. This is something that's absolutely wrong, and I will do that on After Armageddon, but still, it's worth watching. You can watch it online. You don't even have to buy it. I think it's worth owning. I bought it. Uh, and I've sat my family down and watched it. It was very interesting with my two daughters that live at home and my wife were going along. And I would say, did you notice anything? They said, yeah, that was stupid. Why would you do that? Uh, and so we had discussions about these things that were instructive uh, to them. So I'd recommend that you watch this. Another one that's worth having and watching is Castaway. Uh, it's, it has some uh, really phony you know, Hollywood things and a couple of them that are really bad. I wish they hadn't put them in there because they're just absolutely, totally, they're impossible. Uh, and uh, that kind of takes away from the film when they do that. But still, it's quite an adventure about, you know, the castaway, Tom Hanks, who is the castaway on this island. 
in the Pacific. And now out of this, and this is actually in my knife article that's coming out, I'm sitting in the theater watching this and seeing what he's going through. Of course, I knew what was going to happen early on when he left his Swiss Army knife on his keychain that he left with his car with his girlfriend. I'm going like, oh man, this is a setup because I know we're going to be cast away some places. Like, you don't leave your knife with your keys. It's on your body, and as a matter of fact, it's on a lanyard so that it's attached to you. So as long as you still have your clothes on, you've got your knife. And he had his clothes on, so he could have had his knife. The other thing that happened while I'm in the theater, I named this little toolkit that I have with me. It's slightly larger than my wallet. That was a premise. I wanted it to go in my hip pocket when I have jeans on so it could be with me all the time. Wallet in the right, tools in the left, and in this I have the ability to make fire, to keep my blades sharp, to repair things. Uh, and uh, to uh, keep my shoes going and things like that. It's a toolkit. Obviously, there's no food and water in it because that doesn't fit in your pocket very well. That's the castaway kit. We'll be doing a, a program on that to help you learn about maybe some of the tools you'd want to have. Uh, so anyway, I named it the, my castaway kit in honor of the movie because I was feeling my right front pocket for my knife on my lanyard and feeling my left hip pocket like, oh, man, I got the ability to make fire in there. I'm sure I'm glad I have that. Another one to consider is the Postman. Now, I warn you about the Postman. I didn't know it was R-rated when I watched it. I picked it up on uh, uh, cable TV one time. Uh, it's mostly because of some of the language and violence in there uh, that it is rated R. Uh, and some people will not touch R. I generally don't watch R. However, I would recommend that you might watch it. In fact, if you can get one of the scrubbed versions of it, that would really, really be good because it's about the governance and it's about the anarchy and it's about some of the conflict that may come on if things get really, really bad. And that's why I would recommend you take a look at these things. Again, not from gloom and doom, but it's more about how can I avoid this? I don't want to go here. What can I do in my community and around me to not end up in these places? Well, your personal beatitudes is something I cover in depth in the Surviving Against All Odds class that will be released here in the near future. It's being worked on. And it's really very, very important that you develop the attitudes that let you make it. And I call them your beatitudes um, because attitude A equals L and or D. Well, what is it? attitude? Life or death? You know, if you lose your attitude and you start reacting to things when it's really, really tough, you don't survive. What's the definition of attitude? Attitude is about how you emotionally respond or react to what's going around on around you, especially when it's completely out of your control. And if you become reactionary in serious situations, you end up dead. This is my list, if you will, these personal be attitudes. And I won't talk about them in depth here, but it's in the order from the top to the bottom and from the bottom to the top. At the two ends there, purpose and passion at the top and forgiveness at the bottom. But what, where they come from and what they lead to, it's about commitment ultimately and those kind of things. Learn about those things in the other classes that I teach. because, And, and if you have these in mind while you're watching some of these TV programs, you're going like, oh, those, that's wrong. That's not right and it helps you filter things. Well, there's a number of classes that I teach, and you can watch some of these things. They're online and or they will be online. Uh, the Foundation Class 1001, Prepare to Survive No Matter What. It's really about developing you, and it's about the core principles for self-reliant uh, living and survival. Uh, it's about the Foundation Library that you must own. We did that program a little while back in the shortened version of it, and then I just mentioned surviving against all odds because that's what it comes down to. But these are all about attitude. Every one of these things is about developing your attitude. It is about obtaining and studying an attitude library that I talk about in these other classes, Deep Survival, Miracle in the Andes, The Raft, One Second After. Those are books that, as far as I'm concerned, you must have. If you're serious about learning to survive and you, and you choose not to buy those books, you're not serious as far as I'm concerned. It isn't just buying them, it's studying them. There's other great books like Endurance and Man's Search for Meaning that I believe are important. And part of what you've got to learn to do from watching these programs, from reading in your library, studying them, and gaining experiences, you've got to have this extreme safety think. Because if you learn to think about safety and you're cautious, then you can, you can live. 
if you ignore safety and some of the learning that needs to be done to get there, then you end up dying. And that's where this, this comes into this guy right here that I do not respect for what he teaches you about jumping into trees, floating down rivers, and climbing waterfalls. You know, this is not safety thinking. Well, there's a lot of classes that I teach as we're winding up, and there's a new one that I'm kind of putting together. It'll be in a very shortened version because I had just a little over an hour to put this thing together, so it's not fully developed, but we'll get started because it is on people's minds right now. There's lots of learning opportunities that we'll provide for you at Safe Harbor. And one of the things that comes out of all of this stuff, and I'm talking about these programs and classes that I do and other people's we have do with us and for us, you must I have, do, and know all of these things? And the answer is, it's not possible for you to know and do all of them. You do as much as you can. You're, you're an expert in these things. If you were with me this last Tuesday night when we did our audio cast with uh, uh, Dr. Jed Adamson, and we were talking about that there because here in these medical modalities and things, is it like you have to know every one of these things we're talking about? It's, no, you can't. You can know and practice and be good at some of them, and somebody else may know the others, and you're going to pool your skills and resources. That's what this is about. So that leads us to this class, 1106, we're in this together. And surviving is about outreach now. It's about cooperation now. It's about building community now, because in the future, you will live or die based on the community, the people that are around you, when it gets really, really bad. If it does, I hope it doesn't. But if it does, you'll turn what could be a disaster into an adventure because of the people that you're living and working with and you've gained experience with. So really it's about principles and, and survival and being prepared and making it through is not just about having things, but it's about what's in your head and your heart. And that's what I've been talking about because what you know is more important than what you have. If your safety and survival is based on the things that you store and have away, what are you going to do when they've all been burned up? in that home. What are you going to do when you have your emergency away from all of your supplies? You've got to know things. That's what it comes down to. Well, loss of infrastructure and normal civilization is, is not going to be a threat to you if you're doing some of these things we're talking about. First, you're fully committed to self-reliant living. You have knowledge, and remember what knowledge is? It's information multiplied by experience. You've got to play with this stuff. So you have knowledge of your options. You, you have backing up that backs up the backup that backs up your backup because you have knowledge and understanding. You have knowledge of proper tools and about how to operate and maintain them. You have sufficient food and storage. And what I mean by sufficient food and storage is that you have lots of this that allow you to, to live long enough while you're building up your gardening skills and ability to do those things and you're also helping other people around you and you're a part of a community and within that community you have the resources and things and the storage you find and create needed resources which means you're experimenting with things right now you live the personal beatitudes now because it'll be too late to learn them in the middle of the world coming down around your ears and you currently produce and store as much food as you possibly can. It may be impractical to have a gigantic garden because you have a job and you have a life and things you need to do, but you're doing everything you can do now so you're gaining the skills and the experience and you're putting in store the tools and the ability to do that. We talk about that in the Resilient Gardener series and in that book that's so important for you to have. That one is in the throes of being produced also. So will you live providently? And the choice is yours. It's by making proper provisions in all of these areas of your life that you can face the future with hope and with confidence. And our mission is to reach and teach as many people. That's why we do what we do here about some of these concepts, and we'll continue doing these things. And every week there are free things you can attend. Tuesday night, uh, you ha we have a Tuesday night audio cast. Most of the time that's me interviewing somebody else and listening to them teach. Each Wednesday night we're right here as you see us here. And then we have the free public archive where you can listen to these things. We post them there. You can come back and attend them there. We also have programs, of course, that are available on DVD and more extensive programs. There is a newsletter that you can register for at Safe Harbor Alliance on the website. Come join us there for these things that are made available to you. And there is new functionality that is close. We've talked about it for a while. I've been looking at it. 
content is being loaded in as I speak right now so that it can be launched. Well, I'm going to I'm going to actually skip over the the Q&A portion right now on these things because I want to give you this other thing that we're going to go through and very quickly uh, it, it, the law of provident living is what we have been talking about this spiritual attitude knowledge and stuff the law of the the uh, stewardship which is about you have authority to act the responsibility to act and you'll be held accountable for what you do and don't do we know those things the law of the parachute and uh, the fact that we're talking about your attitudes knowledge skills and supplies that you have to have with you before you need them you have to know how to use them you have to have them with you when you need them. You have to actually know how to use them. You have to actually use them. They have to be of life-saving quality. And it is the true preparedness uh, is, uh, and when we talk about preparedness and these principles, here's some of these principles I talk about in these other classes. We've just touched on them very briefly right now. Where can you learn more about those? Online uh, at safeharboralliance.com because there's a free online class. I already mentioned 1001. Go to the webcasts open up the past webcast area or in the library in the future and there it will be for you to watch one of the classes we did in the past and send people to it it's free and it's available the other thing you can do is from Safe Harbor Alliance you can get the foundation DVD which is two hours of principle based things some of the things I've talked about tonight and a whole lot more than is here in this principle area we look at these nine areas, the principles, which is in the foundation, clothing, water, sanitation, shelter, wellness, tools, and supplies. Make it a lifestyle. I've mentioned this again and again, and I always will. It isn't something you store in the basement, put in the closet, or have in the trunk of your car. It's something that you play with. You test and try and have fun. You experiment. You make mistakes. Make it a part of your lifestyle. Do strange things right now. And I'm not trying to turn everybody into desert campers and extreme backpackers and go out outside and live in the winter but you need to have a level of experience that says I know that these things work so play with them because the truth about life is this there's no doubt that tomorrow will come and there's no dispute that things happen but how you're prepared to meet tomorrow will make all the difference in the world if you're prepared for the worst then no matter what happens it will be an adventure